All right, guys, what's up, Paris? So today is the vote for uh, Ketanji Brown Jackson to uh, be confirmed to the Supreme Court. And as I expected and said in my um, video from, I think, uh, two days ago now, that the vote will actually be quite close. That it's going to be, uh, I said, either it's going to be a 50 to 49. She just needs a full majority. Probably it's going to be about 50. Three to forty-nine now, given that you have, given that the Senate is evenly split, and that um, you have three Republicans that will be uh, siding with the Democrats to confirm Ms. Uh, Brown Jackson to the court, um, in addition to the two independents, Agnes King and Bernie Sanders, that actually caucus with the Democrats, so they um, in that column. But before we get to that, um, or actually along those lines, let's, let's go here first. Along those lines, the vote is probably going to be somewhere along um, the lines here. Let's see. Or this is the procedure, but we have uh, right here. So the Senate uh, motion, uh, motion they were voted on invoking closure would mean basically mean. When something can't get out of committee, we're going to go ahead and force the vote onto um, the Senate floor of a simple up or down, right? And so the Senate committee was bitlocked. Um, the Judiciary Committee was bitlocked as even with split amongst the 11 Republicans, 11 Democrats. So it was then presented to uh, the Senate, the full body, and they said, hey, let's go ahead and um, uh, vote on this, give it an up or down and senators by name, and then also the senators by their vote position. Again, the vote came down, oh, well, the vote came down to 53-47, and which will probably be along the same lines of what of which uh, Judge Brown Jackson is confirmed. As you can see, there are, let's see, you have Lisa Murkowski somewhere around here on this list. Lisa Murkowski, Susan Collins, Mitt Romney. Um, the three of them are known as the um, Republicans that you know might actually go to the other side of the aisle and try to work out a deal. They, these are the three uh, senators here, Ms. Kelsey, Ms. Romney, Ms. Collins. Um, now, Susan Collins actually just won um, you know, a tight re-election campaign and so she's not worried about, about uh, the fact that she's getting pressure to vote a certain way. Mitt Romney, I'm not sure that he'll even seek re-election. I actually saw somewhere that he may not uh, seek re-election. So this might be his way of saying, hey, I'm bowing out his, my, my legacy vote, whatever. But he has voted twice before against uh, Judge Jackson. Uh, for her previous uh, roles on, on the court, on, on the law of courts. But you also have to remember um, Mitt Romney's family history. I mean, her, his father, um, you know, uh, I think it's Mitch Romney or something like that. I don't know. Uh, the, his father was the second, uh, the husband, right, under Nixon. And he had a, um, or had this ideal as the governor of Michigan and then eventually as, um, Governor of Michigan and then HUD Secretary of okay, being or striving towards a post racial society or more fair society. And, you know, he was, he caught a lot of uh, criticism for that and was ultimately pushed out. And Lisa Murkowski, again, she is known as this uh, senator that can reach her across the aisle, et cetera. She's in a tough re election fight. And I've actually saw some polls from Real Clear Politics suggesting that. You know, she may not win re, uh, win her party's uh, nomination, but I do want to state that in, I think it was her last re-election campaign, um, her party decided to nominate someone else and she still got, uh, she wrote a, she ran a run-in, a write-in campaign for the general election and she still, be, you know, won the race. And so she, again, <laughs> managed to get back in there. And so, you know, they have winning streaks and they also have morals. 
Um, Mitt Romney, he's someone who has been known to say, hey, let's get past this race thing. And he actually tried that with, you know, actually going to Black Lives Matter rallies or marches um, with fellow clergy, because he's also a minister. Many people didn't know that. So anyways, um, the final vote uh, today is probably going to be about 53 to 47 once we get to the actual bill to nominate her and move her nomination along. But once she is um, confirmed, she will still have to wait. Uh, Judge uh, Stephen Breyer is he does not plan on actually. Judge Breyer does not actually plan to resign until um, the end of. He doesn't actually plan to resign until um, uh, the end of this current term, which will be in June, right? And so there will be other cases that. Um, Judge Jackson or Justice Jackson will sit in on, and these they have already been uh, granted cert or I be able to um, or cert rather uh, to be heard in uh, the fall. You have some cases concerning. Let's see, this one is petitions whether whether various provisions of the Indian Child Welfare Act, namely the minimum standards section nineteen twelve. Uh, let's see this one. Whether the state of Alabama's 2021 redistricting plan for seven seats, blah, 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 violated the voting rights. And you can almost uh, be assured that Judge Jackson will be a reliably liberal vote, um, along or as was uh, Justice Breyer. And so, I mean, we just got to you know, think about that and think about where she might fall on that uh, court, pair, you know, uh, spectrum. <clears throat> and I think that she'll actually make a good justice. Um, I think that she's more than qualified for this. Now, the point of me making this video was actually two things. First is that you have Chuck Schumer who said this. So while we heard while we heard that from uh, Chuck Schumer, who of course made this explicitly um, about race, we have to understand that. Yeah, you know what? Let's play this other clip, right? And then I'll get more into it. This is actually of Joy Reid's tweets about Tim Scott.
So I just wanted you to see that main uh, thing, and I'll like to go back to my photos of um, of uh, Judge Jackson and everything else. Listen, guys, I'm so sick and tired of the fact of you know you got people like Joy Reid who pretty much says that all black people have to think a certain way. And that's not true. Black people are so diverse in our thinking. You have black people who are, uh, you have some that are liberal, but you also have some that might be conservative. You have some that are libertarians, as you might see that I demonstrate a lot of libertarian thoughts and beliefs. You have those who don't care, they're just independent, which I am a registered independent right now. That being said, I am tired of seeing this media caricature of what a black conservative or Republican is or has to be or has to be. Black people are more diverse in every regard than what we are portrayed by and through the dominant media. We're not all criminals and we're not all liberal. We're not all one way or another. There's so much diversity. And if Joy Reid has said this about any other group, I mean, she would be canceled. Any other racial group, she would be canceled. If she had said this about anyone else or any other, like, and then the fact that she was attacking Tim Scott, the guy behind not only Opportunity Zones, which is also a Cory Booker idea, and criminal justice reform, which is also a Cory Booker idea, which, you know, they failed in their negotiations, whatever, but him and Cory Booker at least tried to get things done. But guess what? No, because Tim Scott is a Republican and actually a, a Black man who stands in his values. I don't know. Maybe Joy Reid is intimidated by that. And I just completely disagree with that. And it's sad, to, and I'm sad to, I'm disappointed to say that because, or I'm disappointed in Joy Reid's characterization of Tim Scott as some type of lap dog, why am I disappointed in that? Because I do believe that Joy Reid is probably, it's probably really intelligent and she knows exactly what she's saying. She's been in the political world for a while. She's highly educated. So with all that education, why is it that you hold Black and white people or Black and any other group to a different standard. Come on, sister. I mean, get it together. And about and the reason I showed this whole Joyous Day clip about uh, Chuck Schumer was that, you know, I'll never forget, it was my mom's birthday. It was my mom's birthday. We were celebrating her birthday, um, you know, right after the Trump-Biden vote. And it was just announced that Biden, you know, had won the election, right? And a woman came up to our family and she said, oh, well, you know, um, Biden gave you your birthday gift. No, the hell he didn't. Our family didn't vote for him. He didn't give us no damn birthday gift by being, uh, you know, selected or nominated, whatever, uh, uh, elected president. He did not give us our, you know, my mom a freaking birthday gift. We didn't vote for him. We, I mean, not to say who we actually voted for. I'm trying to make this this uh, YouTube channel as independent as possible. But at the same time, I'm like, what are you talking about? And why would you even come over to our family and disrupt us like that? That was explicitly, that little scenario, she only felt coming up to us and saying that on the basis of race and on the basis of, okay, here's a black family out here celebrating and they must be celebrating or, or they, they'll they be happier to know that we have our first black uh, vice president and black woman vice president, et cetera. The Democrats have made everything explicitly about race. And while I'm glad, I'm so glad that our country has progressed from the point where my grandfather, he uh, he wasn't allowed to walk the stage or get his high school diploma because he refused to cut his afro, right? 
that's only because he's black. Whereas his grandson will now receive his law degree and be able to go on and, you know, represent as, as many clients, yada, 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 all this other stuff. Our country has come a long way on a racial progression or, or the, the, the journey towards progress. But at the same time, there's so much division and strife. And we have to be honest about which party, you know, one party has its problems, but the other party is just continually to push these problems and to make them lines of division. And then if you don't uh, uh, agree with the group thing, you get, you know, Joy Reid versus Tim Scott and made into the caricature. And I'm just so tired of this group think that is happening. So guys, while I'm happy that um, uh, Judge Jackson will become Justice Jackson pretty soon, and I think that it's marvelous that we see a sister with um, sister locks, and we see someone who's also qualified and has worked her way up to the Supreme Court. I also want to call out the elements of our political spectrum that has sadly, you know, hasn't caught up to that progress and all they see, like uh, Joy Reid is the color of it all. And the fact that black people are not supposed to have diverse uh, thinking. And I also, you know, just one other thing to that whole point is that, again, Tim Scott is also in a, um, he's in a, a election year, you know, he's running for re-election down in South Carolina. He was willing to cross the aisle for um, Judge Michelle Childs, who I also talked about in a previous video, him and Lindsey Graham. And they went on record with that. Biden chose a different judge who he thought would be a little bit more politically um, malleable. I don't know what his calculation was, but he chose a different judge. Okay, so you know we're at the point where we are now. But Joy Reid's characterization of Tim Scott of, oh, well, he's going against this Black woman. That's not exactly true. Michelle Childs is a Black woman as well. And if we want to really, you know, just capture this picture holistically, we could have gone to the, back to the fact that Trump had three chances to nominate, you know, a more diverse Supreme Court, and he didn't take it. I wish he did take it, but he didn't. And But he, again, said, hey, look, he chose the diversity of thought in the analysis process of how what these judges go through, and you see that in the fact that Neil Gorsuch and uh, Amy Cormier Barrett and Brett Kavanaugh have all decided cases or voted differently, um, you know, than what a, the conservative majority might, uh, particularly in the um, what was that case? It was about giving land back to the uh, Native American communities getting land or administration of land over in Oklahoma. I mean, you have cases like that. So anyways, guys, I, I think I'm just so disgusted by Joy Reid's characterization. I'm just going to go ahead and end this video. But um, I thank you guys for tuning in to Black Jurors. Um, and one, while I'm on this topic, I named the channel Black Jurors for two reasons. It was initially black letter jurors. And when I just, you know, tried to say that all out, I was like, man, that's way too long of a phrase. So I just named it black jurors for short. Um, I will uh, refer to it in both ways as black jurors and black letter jurors. Black letter law being, you know, essentially what the actual law is, the interpretation of law. And so guys, I hope that you continue to um, join me on this journey and Please stay tuned in. Thank you.